Hi guys, I'm back. Um, in the last video, this is as far as we got, and I was saying I need to adjust this so that these guys can lock in with some kind of wedging system. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take this all apart, take out this pin, take out this, take out this, and I'm going to make some longer ones of these. gonna take all this apart. Hmm. Let's mark this and measure it before I have to do it again. 
So uh, I'm going to put it back into the shaving horse. And so I just brought you in a bit closer, or brought a bit closer to you, whatever. And now, like I was saying, I'm going to use a bit of broomstick. And I should drill the hole a little higher so that the Here's a bit of broomstick, so that it won't be just like this. It'll actually, the hole will be drilled slightly above, and then we can flatten one edge of the broomstick and knock it in with a hammer and jam it tight. Now, if you don't have a big enough drill to drill for the drill broomstick, well, well yeah, this is not a how-to video. I'm all the time making how-to videos. So yeah, I'm just gonna get on with it. Okay, holes drilled. Cut a bit of glue stick off. I'm going to have to pull it in and out, I guess, something like that. Make it slightly tapered as well. Let's see how that fits. Okay, so these guys are in. Everything's nice and tight. I made them a little bit tapered so that they get tighter when you push them and it pulls all this down. Now, <laughs> this is always fun. Now, Now, the question always on my lips, where's my pencil? Here it is. My ears are too big, it won't stay behind them. I'm just going to make myself a little mark here like this, so I know where this hole is. I don't have to fiddle around too much. So now, I need to, I think I'm going to get rid of that corner like I said. Maybe I'll whack it off. Can safely take off a few centimeters here to make some kind of nice shape out of it if I want. Something like this, so that this doesn't hit it and the dumb head can open a bit more. But now I need to make some kind of pedal that also can be put on and taken off quite easily. I think I'm going to use the same kind of technique. Um, I'll need a shoulder. I can't have a shoulder because I can't get. Yeah. All right, so give me some time to figure this one out because it needs to be able to dismantle easily. It needs to be made with simple tools. Yeah, so a screw is not good because it's going to get stuck here. Cutting a tenon, someone's going to need a chisel. Well, they could do it with a handsaw, but it's fiddly widdly stuff. Mm. Yeah, maybe we just stick a broomstick all the way through. I don't really like that idea, but it could be working. We're just drilling a hole. Yes, yes, yes. I'll think about that a moment. Hmm. So this is the broomstick idea, which actually is, seems great. Push all this thing with a lot of effort. And we've got such a huge lever here. We don't need much pressure here, so I'm going to keep it simple. That's it. We're just going to make a hole and stick in a broomstick like this. So I'm going to go and drill this one. Okay. 
So let's see how these improvements have worked. This is really solid now. So I've got a stick. Now there was a comment um, that someone wasn't really sure what one of these things does. So here you go, this is what it's for. It's for holding my material. And then you've got two hands free to hold a draw knife or a spoke shave or sandpaper, chisel, drill, whatever. And you can hold the workpiece with both feet. I can push. Now I don't need an awful lot of pressure because I've got this huge lever here, which gives me an awful lot of um, pressure. And now with my draw knife, I can start to hog off my hog off material to make a, a tenon or a such a thing, a handle for a hammer, the leg for a stool, whatever it is I need to make. Spoke for a wheel, rung for a banister, I don't know, whatever it is you're doing. So there you go, and now I can just take it in and out like this, compared to the English type where you have to stick it down there. And I find they don't have much much grip on the English type. I like this kind, but you know, it's entirely your decision. Especially when I've got long pieces, I can just stick them in from the side instead of threading them in and out. I can just take them out without having to do this. Anyway, look at that. This is all staying in its place and, uh, and good. So let's see now, that's the map. Over there a minute. Now, if I want to dismantle it, I'll take this out. Perhaps I want to take off the dumb head. Perhaps I don't. I'll take out this arm. This. I want to knock these pins out. Probably need a little hammer for that. Let's see. Oh, uh, that one's out. This one's a bit tight. Tight's good. Take this out. I want to store these guys in here like this. And I can store that out of the way. Hang it on the wall, like I do all sorts of stuff. And then, you can fold this up, like this. You can stash that out the way somewhere too. So yeah, cool. What's left for me to do now is just drill this and put some threaded rod through. Because even though it's a prototype, it's going to be in use for sure. Look what I found! Here's my 13 millimeter drill bit that I turned the cupboard upside down. Uh, and I need it again because the threaded rod I've got is also 13. So I guess it's like half an inch. So here <laughs> it was all the time in my horizontal drilling machine, mortising machine, whatever you want to call this thing. Yeah, I'm so happy I found it! That's really good news. Having to go through all that 12 and then 12 and a half, and it's still a bit tight. It's just great. This is my threaded rod, and I happen to have some huge washers, which I kind of like. I don't really need them, but they look great. So I'm just going to drill a test hole. Drills a little bit. <laughs> Look at that. A little bit bent. Uh, 
Thankfully, it's not rocket science. Oh, that's perfect. Really nice. So now the real thing. Okay, now I've just encountered a problem, which is not a not a rare problem. That I had a screw in this hole, but ne never mind. I have a hole, a pre-existing hole, and I now I need to enlarge it. Now with a brad point bit, which is the size 13 I've got, it's hard to get it centered. It's going to jump all over the place because the, the point has, hasn't got a center. If you have a metalwork bit, because it's like a cone shaped, it'll self-center itself more effectively. So it's not too bad. But I don't have a metalwork bit. I don't have a metalwork bit in the right size. So what you can do is you can just stick something in that hole, like a dowel, or I'm just going to take a piece of wood and just make it. That wasn't very good. Bash my chisel against the drill press. Never mind. And just make a piece. Like it's going to fit in that hole, like so. Bash it in. Chop it off. I'm doing this a bit, bit cock-eyed, just because I wanted you guys to see what I'm doing, and I was too lazy to move the camera. But there we are. So now I've blocked up that hole, my bit has got somewhere to center. So now I can drill. Like this. The other side I marked across. Now if I want to be sure of things, I could mark across here again. I should have blocked this hole because then I'd have this. But um, it's just a prototype. I'm not gonna go mad. And then once the body of the drill is inside, it's centered, it doesn't have a problem. Even when it's a bent drill. There we are. Cool. So now I'm going to do the rest of those. No sparks. No fire. Little bit of physical exercise. Preferable, I would say. Look at this guy. <laughs> this reminds me of a kid's toy, a very old child's toy. all the pieces. So I'm just going to see how this threaded rod go. Um, I'm not going to chop off the corners in the end because if you're going to be using this thing as a shaving horse, a shaving horse, uh, a saw bench, you don't need a chair stuck on there. So the chair should have like a cleat or something on the bottom that can sit in this gap. And, uh, and that's it. Can take it on and off whenever you want. That cut there was good. Some 
marks to keep everything in the right place. Now this bolt was already jammed and rusted on the end, so I'm just going to leave it with one bolt. This side, I'm just going to tighten up finger tight, and then I'll lock it with another bolt. Like this. Okay, so that length was good. Oh, I like it, I get to recycle some more. I just found this, which is the... It was off some Pilates thing that you stand on and swivel, swivel around. And one of my students bought it for the the contraption, the the thingamajiggity, the the bearings thing, because they wanted the bearings for another project. Uh, and this got left it, and it's got some grippy stuff on it. So I'm going to just put it on there, and that's going to be my seat. I'm just going to put a cleat underneath. Something that just sits in that gap so it won't slide back or wobble around. Cool! An adjustable seat. No, not really. It'll push back into the hips there when you're pushing with your legs here. But great! Okay. Oh, that's better. Sitting on a seat. Super duper. Oh, I put the head on upside down. Look. That was the 50 centimeter bit, you see, look, um, and it's just a bit shorter, a bit taller than my knee, so I've got plenty of weight on it, and I'm just resting on this leg. <laughs> Very good in 
D. Well, I'm chuffed. Very happy with that. I was talking about how to make maybe some other kind of clamping device. Many years ago, I worked with a professor of the technology of wood or something like this was his title. Very nice chap called Egal. And uh, together we researched and reconstructed and built a Roman workshop for a museum in Jerusalem. It doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. Um, but it was a great project. We actually made the wooden bodies of the tools and a blacksmith made all the sharp edges and stuff. And we made drills and planes and saws uh, and we made a Roman workbench. And that Roman workbench worked with all sorts of wedges and stuff. So I'm gonna go do a little bit of homework and figure out what might be something suitable to connect to this. But for now, it works very well as a saw bench. It works very well as a shaving horse. I'm really happy with it. Um, that was just me figuring it out. Stay tuned, because I'm gonna make one with plans and all out of dimension lumber. Um, you can use a handsaw or whatever you've got. So I'm gonna figure out some other shaving horse in the future. Don't hold your breath. Um, I think I've got some other projects coming up before that, but uh, there you go. If you can get your head around that basic idea, it's not so complicated. Uh, thanks ever so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope to see you all back here again. If you did like it, please like, subscribe, ring that little bell and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.